Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner. So in this one, we actually make a menu scene. So this is our menu before we jump in into the game. So here it is, then we hit play and it actually works. Then we launch into our game and then we can die and press play again. We fix our little bug with the left right beginning and then we can hit to menu and it goes back to the menu scene. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so last time we left, we had a little glitch, which was right about there. So when we hit play again, we're actually allowed to move our player during the animation phase, and that's definitely not something that we can allow. So the way we're going to fix this, we're going to start by fixing this before we go inside of the the, the, the making the scene uh, for the menu scene. We're going to go inside of player motor. It's a really simple fix, really. So inside of player motor, Let's declare a float somewhere, a private float that we're going to call start time. And now what we'll do is whenever we call start, we're going to say start time is equal to time dot time, like this. And then the condition that uh, does not work anymore is right about there. So we say if time dot time minus start time is smaller than animation duration and then go ahead and move using our animation settings. So let's test this out. We're not allowed to move which was normal behavior. We enter collision, we hit play and we are still not allowed to move. So right now we fixed that bug and we can now move on to uh, either another bug or we could be making the menu scene. Let's actually make the menu scene. So guys, we are going to hit Ctrl N on the keyboard to create a new scene. Now you could also go under File, New Scene like this. And then after that, make sure you hit Ctrl S to save it for save. And we're going to go under Scene and save this as the Menu Scene. It's really important that you call it Menu like this because inside of our script, where is it at? The Def Menu, we're loading the scene called Menu. Now of course, if you want to have a different name, just make sure that whatever is in this string, in the load scene string, is the same exact thing as the name of your scene. Okay, so just like we did for the game scene, I'm going to go under Window, Lighting, and turn off the Skybox. So here we go, we have the default blue color now, which I like better because there's no, there's no gradient. And uh, of course, later on, we, we set our own Skybox. So once this is done, what do we need now? We need a piece of UI. So let's right click inside of our key, go under UI, and uh, let's start with a button. So that's going to be the standard play button. Now I will be putting this in the center, resetting all of my values, so here they are, and maybe just a little bit down in position X, so maybe minus 50. Also, let's, let's just go back really quickly on the canvas and make sure this scales with screen size. Okay, so now it actually scales with screen size. Right. So um, once we've got this, we can now modify our button so it takes, say, uh, all this space on the screen, maybe this big. So 350 by, say, 100. I'll be changing the image as well. And that will be my play button right about there. Now, of course, inside of it, we can change, well, let me just rename this play button. Inside of it, we can change the text for play. And I will then make the font, my custom font, make the color a nice bright white. And there we go. So that's going to be my play button. Now, I don't know if you guys remember what we do with this. We have to actually assign a function inside of this. So um, we don't really have a script that does that just yet. So we're going to create a new one on top of my canvas, actually. On top, no, never mind. Let's do on top of my main camera just to test out some stuff. I'm going to add a new component called uh, uh, main menu. Why not? And this is going to be, of course, a script we're about to open. This one is going to be fairly simple. And uh, sorry about that. You know what? Let's remove it off the camera. It makes no sense. We're going to create a new empty game object instead. 
we're going to move that object to the origin and name it main menu. You can call it main menu man manager if you wish, but I'll just be calling it main menu. So on top of this object, I will drag and drop my main menu component. And now this is a object without a mesh. It just it, it's just there in memory. It doesn't have a mesh. It's not being displayed, and that's perfectly fine. It's going to run our code anyway. So inside of the main menu, let's double click on it to open it up in Mono Develop. We're going to have a public function. Public void to game. Now this is going to be the exact same thing we had in the what is it? The def menu. But instead of calling load scene uh, menu, we're going to say load scene game. Now, in order to use the scene manager, we need to say using Unity Engine dot scene management up here. Okay. So it's really as simple as that. Now, if we go back on our canvas and we choose our button, our play button, we go under button, unclick and then we click on the little plus sign, choose our main menu object, drag it in there, then it's going to fetch all of its component. And now since this is an empty game object, it only has these three components, the game object, which is uh, there by default, the transform, which is the first component of that object, and then the main menu, which is our own. Main menu has a function, a public function called to game, and here we are. So whenever we press on this button, we should actually, well, get an error, but something happened, right? It says scene game could not be loaded because it has not been adapted to build settings, which is perfectly normal. So in order to have this interaction between scenes, you need to add them to the build settings. And we're going to do that, uh, we're going to do that just now by clicking on file, build settings. Now this is the build manager, this is the build settings manager. What we need to do is actually make sure that all the scenes we're going to be using in our build are in there. So right now we're in the menu scene, let's go ahead and do add open scene. As you can tell now we have scenes underscore menu has been added. If we go under game scene and we click on add open scene, then we now have our two and that's exactly what we want. And that's actually all we need too. We can close off this menu now, go back to the menu scene and then hit play. That's our menu scene. We click on play. The game is launching. We crash on the object. And then we should have the play again button, which works. And now our menu button should also work. So we go back to the scene. And this is how we create a really, really simple game flow guys. Now this is your menu scene. You can put pretty much anything you want in there um, and we're going to be putting the high score that's for sure. Not in this episode but a little bit later on. In fact next episode we're going to be putting the high score but it's just to let you know that you're, you're allowed to put pretty much anything you want in there um, in order to make this look good. You could say be putting a bridge right in the middle and then I can position it in a certain way so when I look at my screen it looks something like this, maybe a little bit lower, or a little bit like this, and then I can move my play button up um, by, say, 50, maybe 100, then even maybe even create a new image up there. So canvas, or even text, so canvas, new text, that I'll be anchoring in the middle, then saying, say, 150, Yes, you, you just gotta be creative with that. I, you know, I can't really make your game look good. You have to do that on your own. And so you just put some text there, make it big and less in caps because yeah, why not? Change the font, make it even bigger like this and maybe in a nice white. and this runner. But yeah, like I said, just gonna be creative with that. Um, have fun, that's the most important part. And here we go, when I hit play, I actually see this. And you might actually wanna put something in the background so you don't get the default uh, blue color. So that's really up to you guys. 
And um, that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. In the next one, we are going to create we're going to create um, a saving function so we can actually save to the registry. So when we stop our game and we boot it again, the data is still there. The data of um, which uh, what what is the highest score? Basically, we're going to keep in, we're going to be keeping track of that. And I think that's going to be pretty much it for that episode as well. So guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this or if you liked it, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. And if you have any comment or question, you can also leave them in the comment section below. I'll make sure to answer them as soon as possible. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.